Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at whether swathing is worth it or not in Farming Simulator 25. So we're gonna do the five crops that you can swath, which is wheat, barley, oats, canola, and soybeans, and just see how much more money you make if you swath them versus if you just grow them and harvest them normally on the exact same field. This video is part of a series, so if you wanna see all the other videos I've done on all of these crops on the exact same field to see which one makes the most, uh, feel free to check the description for the playlist. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So first up, we're going to do wheat, which is planted with a cedar. Fairly straightforward. I've already done these crops before, but the difference is when it comes to harvesting this time, we're going to be using a swather, which basically just cuts it all at the header and forces it through instead of a normal harvester, which will thresh the grain, which means separates the kernels or the grain from the actual stalk. Uh, the swather just lines it all up into a row or a swath and leaves it on the ground. We then come through later with a pickup header, which picks up the grain, as the name would suggest, works it through the combine at a later date to thresh it, which again separates the grain from the stalks or the straw, and then we leave the straw in the back and then we come back through later with a baler and make the bales. Now, as far as swathing goes in Farming Simulator 25, all it does is in improve your yield by a little bit, and it does improve it a little bit. Um, but in real life, it's not used for that necessarily. It would be used uh, especially in areas where the field is not drying out in a uniform way, right? All the crop doesn't die at the same time. Some It'll die in patches where there's been less moisture or whatever else. Uh, so farmers can sometimes, with certain crops, cut them early to let them all die at the same time because they all got cut down at the same time and so the harvest is more uniform in, turn of, in terms of moisture levels and whatnot so you don't lose as much yield uh, because some crops when they die and dry out their kernels or their grain will start dropping to the ground and you lose yield that way. Another reason uh, is some crops can be damaged in early winter storms so if farmers know a winter storm is approaching they can cut down their swath, their grain early into swaths, let it dry out for a couple of days, and then go through and harvest it before the winter storm comes. So you can kill your crops early to be able to harvest them, or you can help the field dry out uniformly. There may be other reasons to do this uh, that I'm not aware of, but again, in Farming Simulator 25, all it does is just boost your yield a little bit. So let's see how much it is. Here is wheat ready to harvest. You can see in the bottom right, I've done all that I can do, and just like every other crop I've done in this field, it's at 100%, which basically just means everything's going to get the same yield. There's no discrepancy in our results. Let's get it harvested. And now we have barley ready to harvest, 100% yield bonus as well, so let's harvest this. Next we've got oats also ready to harvest with 100% yield bonus, so let's get that harvested. Here is canola ready to harvest with 100% yield bonus, so let's get it. All right, y'all, last crop for the video is soybeans, and you can see they're at 100% yield bonus down in the bottom right. So let's get this done, and we'll get right to the results for you. All right, with all those crops done, we're going to plant cotton for the next video while I talk about the results. So for wheat, we, wheat, barley, and oats, we uh, obviously did the straw separate. So you sell just the grain, or you can choose to go through and bale it all up and then sell it, and I think that's the way you need to do these crops, because otherwise you won't make any money. Uh, so here are the results for wheat. Without baling the straw, we got $48,929. With the straw, we got $70,838. For barley, we got $48,828 without the straw. And if you did the straw as well, you got $70,737. For oats, without the straw, we got $49,585. And with the straw, it was $71,494. Canola, which doesn't have bales, so it's just the grain straight up. Makes it faster to harvest, but of course you don't make as much money. Only $57,606. And for soybeans, which was, in my opinion, the best of the first video that we did, soybean swath gets you $72,625. Um, any variance, of course I said oats made more money in the first video, now soybeans do, is based on simply price fluctuations. Uh, sometimes the best price for the year is a little higher than other years, so perhaps soybeans had a bad year in the first video where oats had a good year, and maybe that's flipped now. Or Giants has made some sort of balance to the pricing and has changed the pricing 
on soybeans or oats or all of the above. So now the verdict. Is swathing worth it? Well, I would say not with small fields. If you're going to do fields much bigger than the one I'm in right now, definitely worth it. I saw around a 23.6% yield boost, uh, which is, I would imagine it's probably closer to 25%. Um, but again, the price fluctuations messed with the number a little bit. So we're probably around a 25% boost, which is fairly significant. Again, that means every 10,000 liters you bring in, you get another 2,500, uh, which is fairly substantial. In fact, soybeans made $14,000 extra on the exact same field with swathing. Now, swathing essentially means you go through twice with the harvester, so it makes the harvest nearly twice as long, not quite, but almost twice as long. Uh, it's not quite twice as long because the swather does go, I think, 11 miles an hour, and the harvester only goes six. So it's not quite twice as long, and yes, you don't make twice the money, but I still think on big fields it is definitely worth it. Additionally, if you want to skip uh, extra yield boost steps but still want to get a 100% yield bonus, swathing is a good way to do that. Some of those things that I'm talking about, of course, would be rolling, mulching, and potentially uh, a second application of fertilizer. If you wanted to just put down fertilizer as you plant, like I'm doing right now, you didn't want to mulch, you didn't want to roll, because those things take time, and you didn't want to do a second application of fertilizer, you could get close to or right at 100,000 liters, or sorry, 100,000% with swathing. It does 25% boost, around 25%, and rolling does 2.5%, two, two mulching does 2.5%. I think each fertilizer does almost 20%, around 20%, so you can get close to a 100% yield bonus while skipping three steps and only adding one. Therefore, that's more time efficient. But honestly, if you're going to do swathing, you may as well just do everything else. Um, the minimum you're going to spend on swathing until mods come out that may be cheaper, because I think modders do have access to the swathing technology, the cheapest you're going to spend is around $300,000 to $350,000. You have to pay for the swather, the swathing header, and the pickup header. And of course, that all comes out to around $300,000 to $350,000. That's quite substantial. If you're only doing a field like this, it's going to take you almost 30 years of farming to make back that money. Of course, if you rent it, that's different. Probably a lot more worth it there. Uh, I'm going to guess for $300,000, you're probably looking at around a $15,000 lease price, which again, on a field like this, you're actually going to be losing money. So definitely go with something bigger. For reference, this field is eight and a half acres, so probably 10 acres and above, I would say swathing is probably worth it from a financial standpoint. But anything smaller than this, unless you have many small fields, I would say it's not worth it. It does add time, it is expensive to start, and it doesn't see a huge boost in yield. Uh, in addition to that, you still get the same amount of straw, which makes sense. The swather wouldn't actually increase the amount of straw that drops on the ground in real life, so they did a good job with the realism there. So that could be another reason why wheat, oats, barley didn't yield or didn't pay as well as soybeans, because while the grain got boosted for wheat, oats, barley, the straw didn't get boosted at all, whereas with soybeans, the entire crop gets boosted. Uh, so yeah, if you're going to do swathing, do it for the fun of it, right? It's a fun, unique way to change things up, unless you have lots of big fields and you want to make as much money as possible then I would say it's definitely worth it. But for fields small, probably not, probably not worth it. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the video. All of your support is greatly appreciated. These videos have been doing pretty well, so I, I appreciate that. If you liked this video, you can check out some other ones uh, in the playlist, as I said, is linked down below. Very similar videos where I try to do more sciencey things in Farming Simulator to figure out what crops make the most money or what you should do with your crops and your land. I hope you guys did enjoy this one, and I'll see you next time. Peace.